Hi. Today we're talking about Neanderthals, specifically the fact that they are human and they are complex and they are interesting in their own way. We often think about them as like really stupid and these kind of thugs. We think of cavemen and Neanderthals as like these really idiot beasts and humans kind of prevailed because we were smart and had brains and we were like so much more above them. And we often forget about their humanity and their complexity. So today I wanted to share with you a really recent discovery in the archaeological record, which has kind of helped us understand Neanderthals a little bit better. Also, there's another chair right here because my cat fell asleep on the chair the chair that's usually here and I didn't want to wake him so I just grabbed another one and I'm sitting on that now so that's why this is here I don't know if you heard that Anyway, I think a reason we have this really negative bias against Neanderthals is because we don't know a lot about them. Obviously, they lived a really, really long time ago. But recently, in I think October of this year, an article was published which discusses a really important discovery in terms of understanding Neanderthals, their social organization, and just a little bit more about how they lived. Early this year, an article was published in the Smithsonian which revealed the results of a study that was undertaken in 2019. This study analyzed the DNA of a group of Neanderthals found in the Chergirskaya cave in the snowy Altai Mountains of Siberia in Russia. It was assumed that Chergirskaya cave was a short-term bison camp due to the organic materials that were found there, which were able to have been radiocarbon dated to between 51 to 59,000 years ago, which is a really fucking long time ago. So let's just look at the context surrounding this discovery and what the earth looked like 60,000 years ago. This takes us back to the middle paleolithic which spanned between 300,000 to 50,000 years ago, otherwise known as the stone age. At this time there are lots of human species walking around the earth and kind of occupying different parts so it's not really similar to how today homo sapiens are the only ones but back then we had Denisovans, homo sapiens, homo florensiensis and of course Neanderthals. Right now we're living in a really weird time because most of human history has involved many different human species living on earth at the same time. So we know that back in the day these species somewhat coexisted with each other but we don't actually know that much about them because it was so long ago it's so hard to find concrete archaeological evidence for any one thing. Now the Denisova hominins and Homo florensiensis are quite new to our understanding of the human species. Their discoveries of those specimens have only really come about in the last decade or two. Um, Neanderthals we've known about for a lot longer but they still remain quite a mystery to us. So what we do know about Neanderthals is that they lived 400,000 to 40,000 years ago so they spanned that sort of amount of time. They lived in Europe and like southwest to central Asia. We know that Neanderthals must have lived alongside Homo sapiens for at least some of their like existence. They lived so closely that some humans today have inherited around 2% of Neanderthal DNA. So don't think they're half as stupid now, do you? Maybe you do. Depends on your general view of humanity. Neanderthals basically looked like humans, so I see where the mix-up happened. But even if there was no mix-up, look at this guy. You're telling me you wouldn't want your ancestors to inherit 2% of his DNA? Neanderthals had really strong and muscular bodies, and they grew to, like, around 1.5 to 1.7 meters tall. I don't know what that is in feet. They're pretty short and stocky. And this was mainly because of the cold environments they lived in. So they lived a lot in like uh, Europe and Northern Europe. So they had to conserve a lot of heat and they did that by being short and like buff. <laughs> they also had shorter lower leg bones and shorter arm bones than we do, um, again, to conserve heat. They also had like a really prominent big nose. It could have helped them breathe better in colder climates because the volume of the nose was so big. It could have like moistened and warmed the air that they breathed. The brain size of uh, Neanderthals range from like 1200 to 1700 centimeters cubed, which is actually bigger than our brains now. So I don't want to hear shit about these guys being stupid, all right? Don't talk about grandpa like that. Neanderthals are really smart. We know this because they made tools. Tools are hard as shit to make when you have to like develop the concept of a tool in order to make one. We've found excavated objects like spears and flint hand axes and they would have had to have like a really complex idea of like the what they wanted to get out of what they were doing in order to make something and consistently make something like that. And we know what they use these for because we found like the markings on their prey. So we found injuries on the prey such as mammoths, bison and reindeer that suggest that Neanderthals were proficient hunters and were actively killing these animals with weapons that they created. 
However, despite this evidence that we have of them, it is so hard to find evidence of how they lived and any evidence about their culture and society. How did they live? Did they live in communities? Did they have language? I don't know why the fuck are you asking me? But Chagirsky AK finally gives us a little bit of insight into their lives and like how they would have interacted with each other and their social organization. So what exactly did they find in this cave? Uh, literally, I'm getting to that. In 2019, Nestled in the back of a snowy cave in the unforgiving wilderness of Siberia, archaeologists found 90,000 stone artifacts, bone tools, and plant remains, and 74 Neanderthal fossils. Wow, good for them. What's so fascinating about this is that the fragmented bones and teeth that they found of the Neanderthals reveal the first ever glimpse of a Neanderthal family. So more than 50,000 years ago, a family of humans died in this cave. And now, because of what we found, archaeologists and geneticists have able to sequence the most complete set of Neanderthal genomes that we have to date. So in Chagirskia Cave, we found 11 individuals. And in a cave right nearby, there were two more. Altogether, eight were adults and five were children. And from this find, we got 13 Neanderthal genomes, which practically doubles the amount that we've had ever in the past, which is really cool because that means we can kind of map their genetics and learn more about them. So before this discovery, we estimated the size of Neanderthal communities based on footprints that we found of theirs um, and the way that they used sites. And this discovery actually proves that we were pretty accurate with the estimation that we were doing because we had estimated um, from these factors that Neanderthals lived in biologically related groups of 20 or less individuals, which is insane that we kind of have proof of that now because that was just the get what is just completely fascinating about this discovery is that these 11 people that were found at Jagirskaya cave lived at the same time. We are getting a look into Neanderthals who lived together as a unit, as a community, as a family. This is so, so incredibly unusual for sites like this and discoveries like this one. Usually when you find sort of people buried that long ago, kind of in the back of a cave, kind of like mm, that can span generations or lifetimes. Like you can see someone who was buried there like 50,000 years ago and then someone will be buried there like 60 years later and then maybe 200 years later. And so you kind of have this like progression of people coming back and dying here, but you know, they're just from wildly different worlds but now we have these neanderthals who were living all together and died all together and we know that they lived as a community so that's really sick so we know that they lived in groups of about 10 to 20 due to the lack of genetic diversity within the group so if we think about the communities that humans live in now or even the ones that we lived in in antiquity 10 to 20 is a lot a lot lower than the communities we're used to living in. The article that I read actually suggests that this is more reflective of a species which is endangered, which is like a bit of an assumption to make, but it's not super far off from what is like plausible. Since this is around 50,000 years ago, and we know that 10,000 years later, all evidence for Neanderthals would be completely gone. You can just imagine this community and this family huddling together at what might be the end of their time on Earth. There are a lot of theories about how Neanderthals went extinct. We don't know, but there are so many theories. People love talking about this. People have a field day with this. Some of them I believe more than others, but I'll talk you through a few of them. But there's the idea that they kind of just assimilated into modern human societies and they sort of just like kept breeding with Homo sapiens and then eventually just kind of the two kind of merged. Neanderthal genes kind of died out. Then there's the more believable theory that Homo sapiens just presented such competition that Neanderthals just died out. Sapiens potentially had better clothing, better shelter. They had improved hunting techniques. They lived in bigger group sizes and they were competing for the same resources, but Homo sapiens were just better at getting those resources. And so the Neanderthals were kind of left to die. And of course, it could have also been climate change and the climate sort of changing leading up to the last glacial maximum that the Neanderthals weren't really adapted to and Homo sapiens were better equipped for. I personally believe it was kind of a combination of all of those things. There's usually not one answer for why a species dies out. But there is the possibility of like a slow burn Neanderthal genocide taken on by the homo sapiens whether or not it was purposeful we have no idea i highly doubt that it was purposeful i just want to say that i'm not trying to be a conspiracy theorist here and say the homo sapiens killed all the neanderthals but i do feel like there's a possibility of like potential warfare happening in a very very different sense of the word than what we're used to now homo sapiens have doubled in population size every 25 years since our 
existence. Once we became like really cooperative hunters, we were at the head of the food chain. We were at the top. We had no predators. So without predators kind of controlling our numbers, you can imagine that Homo sapiens kind of just took over the fucking world, right? And they grew to exploit the available resources that they had. And if they saw Neanderthals as a competition to those resources, it's very possible that they methodically killed them all. And this took um, tens of thousands of years, right? And warfare could have been like an evolutionary benefit to humans to prolong their species. Could have been like an evolutionary reaction. Personally, I think that's pretty likely kind of considering how humans have progressed since then and how we have a little bit of a reputation for slaughtering and killing innocent people and animals. So maybe this is where we learned that violence is the answer. Anyway, going back to our cave in Siberia, archaeologists examined both the mitochondrial DNA and the Y chromosomes of the people that they found in the cave. So mitochondrial DNA is DNA that you inherit from your mother and obviously you inherit your Y chromosomes from your father um, if you have one. Not a father, a Y chromosome. What they found is that there's a lot more genetic diversity in the mitochondrial DNA, which is mind-blowing because this suggests that women in this time maybe move from community to community. So essentially, if they found like a partner, the woman would move in with the man, kind of move into his community and form part of his family as opposed to the other way around. And that is an aspect of social organization that this site really opens our eyes to. But let's talk about who we actually have here. I'll give you a little rundown of everyone that we have. There are two members of Chagirskia Cave, aptly named Chagirskia D and Chagirskia H, have a first degree relation. Since D is male and H is female, this essentially means that they could be either brother and sister or father and daughter. And since the two have very different mitochondrial genomes, that kind of rules out brother and sister, and we're left with a father and his teenage daughter. The father, Chagirskia D, also shared identical mitochondrial DNA with two other males in the cave, Chagirskia C and Chagirskia E. So that means that these individuals were related through their maternal lineage and were perhaps fourth degree relatives, meaning that they possibly shared a grandmother. So they could be cousins. Or something. This is just like an incredible look at how people lived 50,000, almost 60,000 years ago. We have a whole family here. We have a dad and his young daughter and we have his cousins and they're all living together in this cave or at least they're hunting bison here for a short amount of time we don't know so often we can't really connect with our ancestors and this is just something that you can like imagine why they were here and the relationship they had with each other i feel like if you think back as recently as like the 1920s even like the 1950s sometimes people have a hard time believing that people even that close to us in time had similar thoughts and jokes and relationships that we do now. Like we often feel so disconnected from them. And if you take that back almost 60,000 years ago, like obviously you're not going to feel connected to some random Neanderthal. But discoveries like this are so important and so interesting because they really humanize the humans that we've kind of forgotten along the way. You know, these people had a family. We like are literally seeing like a dad and his daughter just chilling, hunting bison in a cave. Unfortunately, it's it's not all super happy um, sunshine rainbows because these individuals did die in this cave. Paleogeneticist Lortis Skov thinks that the group may have died of starvation after like a failed bison hunt. So they were in this cave to kind of hunt bison. Maybe they didn't do a very good job and then they passed away due to starvation. Geochronologist Richard Roberts has another idea. He thinks that maybe it was just a really bad storm. He's quoted as saying, they are in Siberia after all. So maybe they just got taken out by nature. So we don't know how they died. But thanks to the discovery in Chagirskia Cave, we know a little bit more about how they lived. I hope you found this as fascinating as I do. Um, this is really one of my favorite discoveries and it just came out earlier this year. So just imagine what else is out there for us to find and discover, not only about Neanderthals, but about any of our human ancestors. Neanderthals aren't stupid and I hope that this discovery can help to humanize them for you. I feel like sapiens have a bit of a, bit of like a victim complex. If I'm gonna be, if I'm gonna like psychoanalyze it, homo sapiens just need to realize that they're not the victims in this situation and they are in fact the aggressor. And not everyone's always gonna be on your side. Personally, I am still rooting for Neanderthals. I think they're gonna make a comeback. Okay, bye. He hasn't moved this whole time. He's just been lying there this whole time. Bitch, I thought I was gonna get my chair back, but I'm not.